Welcome to Digital Marketing Solutions, the only podcast hosted by a marketing and startup consultant with over 20 years experience working for ad agencies across the world. Start getting the results you want with online marketing today. And now, here's your host, David Summerfleck. And hello, my name's David Summerfleck. I am your host and welcome to another episode of Digital Marketing Solutions Podcast. My guest today is Chris Inman. Chris is co-owner of Classic Strategic Media, but his journey to get there has been in working with some of the best video professionals in the Cleveland market. Chris started his career at Classic Worldwide Productions in 2000 and was hired by his now business partner, Jerry Patton. At Classic Worldwide, Chris started off as a production assistant and soon began moving upward into the Cleveland video production community. During those years at Classic Worldwide, Chris worked on a variety of productions from handheld productions at Cleveland Cavalier Games to traveling to New York as a grip to a documentary about 9-11. Now with his position at Classic Strategic Media, Chris spends most of his days helping his clients create social media content. As an addict to LinkedIn, Chris has noticed what works and what doesn't work in gaining attention on social media. Chris loves his career, but will always say his favorite job is being a father to two wonderful sons. So thank you for joining us, Chris. I oh, appreciate thank you so much it. for having me on. I appreciate it. Let's get started with this. What would you say because it sounds like you cover a lot in terms of video production. Is there a specific type of video production that you would describe like in layman terms that you say is, is best for the typical business owner? So I think there's a lot of different realms of uh, videos out there. There's companies that are producing giant, beautiful brand videos, and you're spending $5,000 for this two to three minute video that encompasses the you know how great your company is but what i really specialize in is creating a, a quantity of quality content is the way i put it because i think that when you have a social media account you should have a video at least once a week on your social media mm. to engage the your audience to tell your story to talk about your products and your brand and video is, is, is the best way of doing that right now. I think there's, there's no argument there. And then with our system, like, you know, you create one video for your social media account. There's so many ways you can use that. And the return on your investment is, is incredible. So now, that's kind of the thing that I work with my clients with right now. Now, let me ask you, Google obviously is the number one search engine in the world. YouTube, which is owned by Google, is the number two search number engine. Two, yeah. So having a video, how does that correlate or tie in with Google and YouTube and Google My Business in terms of SEO? And then part two of that question would be, how long do you think a video should be ideally in terms of length and, and, and how far do you want to go with these cute animations and whatnot that you see? So it's kind of a multi-part question. Well, let's start with the first one, uh, the Google search. So think about when you do a Google search, there's videos that pop up within that search. Very and true. while Google owns YouTube, you know those are going to be the number one videos up there on that, in that search. So let's say you own a power washing company and somebody you know does power washing get sap out of you know your house or off your your house or something it's something to do with that well if you created a video about it boom there it is if someone does that search uh you took your video and you created a blog and a landing page on your website and you integrated that landing page into your your seo Again, it brings you back to your home page and it has the video, it has your blog or whatever that might be. And so it kind of enhances because when you start scrolling through your search, a picture, a graphic grabs your attention more than just the words sometimes. So yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And from an SEO perspective, if you make if you to take the power washing company example, if you have say local SEO and use that in your video. Um yes the vast majority of companies that are small businesses and local are not going to have 
video commercials on YouTube with local SEO. Yeah. So if the power washing company is say Miami, Florida, you may have more competition than if you were in Sarasota, Florida. So you say Sarasota, Florida power washing company is the title of your video. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to go to the top of YouTube if someone looks that up and that will convert over to Google and you put that embed that into your website and it's just going to naturally connect all of them do you yeah. agree oh absolutely and your seo i mean i'm not an seo expert i will never claim to be but i believe that i've been told many times that the longer somebody is on your website yeah the higher so if you think about it, if someone's going to sit there and watch a three minute video that's three minutes that they're locked in on your website. That really helps your SEO. Oh, absolutely. Because now they're interested and they're less likely to leave the website and go back to Google or go to a competitor site, which is the bounce rate. So how long do you think the typical video of that nature should be? Should it be three minutes? Should it be uh, a minute or half a minute? I read somewhere that on YouTube, they prefer videos that are much longer so that they can insert commercials. What, what do you think about that? So, okay, let's begin with the, the YouTube and longer videos with commercials. You as a m company aren't making money off the YouTube channel. That's not the purpose of having that. So you don't want to try to insert commercials in the middle of your, your videos. You don't want to have the commercials at the front and beginning. The pennies that you're making off that should be irrelevant compared to what you're making in your real company. Very That's true. That's not the purpose of your YouTube channel. There are Very true. Are YouTube products to make money off of that. But you as a business owner, that's not why you have a YouTube channel. I, so you're, I you, agree. You have a bigger problem with your industry and why you're, why you, what you're doing for real. Yeah. So with that being said, you don't need to have a long video. Let's be honest about people's attention spans. It's pretty short. So I always suggest a YouTube video being under three minutes long, unless the subject matter calls for it. So if you're doing a full series, if you're a financial advisor and you're going to go down and, and list the reasons why, you know, you as a 20 year old should be investing how much money in your, your, your retirement fund and all this. And the subject matter is long enough to fill the time without dragging it out and making it boring for the listener. Then yes, you can go longer, but I would be short, concise, and to the point in a video and because people's attention spans are pretty short. Yeah. I mean, people get bored during a commercial break and they start flipping through the channels before they wait for their show to come back on. Yes, there are commercials you didn't choose to pick, but still their attention spans very low. So that goes in point then when if you're producing stuff for your, your Facebook, your Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, stuff like that. I suggest under 90 seconds. Now, let me ask you what your preferred social media platform is. I think I know what you're going to say. Well, I am a business to business person. So I'm after my ideal client are marketers. I love working with marketers and helping their clients succeed and create video content. So with that, I'm on LinkedIn because I'm not going after the average consumer. Right. So that is my favorite, as it said in my bio, you know, I'm an addict to LinkedIn. I spend hours, you know, every day going through people's posts, interacting, sending messages, and just interacting with my ideal client. And would, that's, I'm sorry, would you say it's a fair statement to say that in terms of social media return on investment, that Facebook is more in terms of reaching everyone like Walmart or trying to anyway, it's extremely broad. Yeah, it's extremely broad. Whereas LinkedIn is going to be more expensive, but you're also catering specifically to business owners who are very, very serious and committed to what they're doing. So it's the, the difference between going to a general random networking event as opposed to an industry specific um, a networking event. Would you agree? I would totally agree. I consider LinkedIn the world's largest networking event that's open 24 seven for whenever you're available to enter it, it's open for you to go and, and enjoy the, the, the networking event. And the other thing is great about LinkedIn. You connect with people you don't know. 
you can do a search. I connect with marketers. So I go marketers, Cleveland area, and I can find those people, send a connection. I find my ideal client. I'm not selling them things right off the bat. Don't send people messages as soon as you connect. I just that, got one. My first warning. Don't I, do that. Unfriend those people. Or this, they are the worst. The idea <sighs> of LinkedIn is just to create the engagement. Yeah. They start reading your posts. They start reading your articles that you post on there, seeing your videos, your your infographics. Have a variety of information out there for them to to learn more about your company and your industry and have it be in the back of their mind when they think about something. Like, hey, I'm I'm looking for someone to do my taxes. Ha, huh, there's a guy that, you know, is always giving tax advice on LinkedIn. I guarantee if you're an accountant and you do taxes and you're on LinkedIn and you're putting out great informative content, you will be in the back of everyone's mind when they're thinking about hiring a tax accountant. Especially if they search for tax accountant on mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Now, what do you think about video introductions? Because I've been contacted, I'm sure you have too, and, and everyone who's in digital marketing, you've been contacted by people through LinkedIn and you get these very short 30 second video intros. Um, I've, I've gotten many, many 30 second video intros. Hi, this is what I do. I think I can make you a million bucks overnight. Let's connect. And usually I end up deleting it. And if they're really annoying, and in some cases they are where they follow up every day, I just go and unfriend them or remove them and just be like, no. Now for me personally, I need the soft touch, long, long game yeah. approach. Is that realistic for today's consumer? or business owner, should they be using these video introductions? And what the person that I described to you, what was he missing? That it just was a, a big tell it to the hand. The nose. You, social media is a long game. It's a long game to attract your, your clients and your customers. No one's going to see one magical video, one read one magical blog and instantly call you up and want to hire you and give you thousands of dollars for you to work for, with them. Perhaps if you're selling some widget, some magical, I made uh, this new thing where someone created golf cornhole. I don't know if you've seen it on Facebook. It's, it's like, instead I, of throwing the bags, they got a little mat and you chip the ball in. Now, if you're selling a product like that. I don't want to touch that. I don't want to touch it. You can create a video and someone scrolling through social media such as Facebook and see that video. I'm like, wow, that looks like fun. I'm trapped in my backyard all summer anyway. I can play this with, uh, with my, my kids and my wife. And yeah, this will be fun. That is a totally different product. I think um, when you're selling your service and you're creating a video and sending it to somebody in a private message. There's some negatives to this, and I, I fully admit this. It, the first one being how many people have their audio up on their phone when they're scrolling through social media? Very true. So now you have this video of someone just talking, but you don't hear them. You don't know what they're saying. And that's why when we create social media videos for our clients, we add subtitle to it. So then when you're scrolling through, there's a graphic at the top of the screen that gives you the tight, what the subject matter is. Mm. So it's kind of eye popping. So if it interests you, you'll at least slow down. Then you'll start reading what the person is saying. Now, if you're in an environment where you can turn on your volume, you turn it up. If not, you still have the ability to read the whole 90 second spot or video through the subtitle. Yeah, so I, you're hitting I agree. All your, you're hitting the target no matter what. I, I agree 100%, and I, I definitely have read that elsewhere. I think that's a very great point. Now, what would you say would be the five platforms that business owners neglect to post their videos on? Yeah, so the first one I would say is Vimeo. A lot of people think YouTube because it's the second largest search engine, which is wonderful. But if you are embedding your video into your website, Vimeo has some amazing abilities. One, you can customize your player, your, own, your brand colors. Number two, which is even better, is you can create a call to action at the end of the video. Sign up. 
you know, click here to get our newsletter, click here to download our PDF that goes further into this. You have your call to action. And then with that, so if you think about it, when you see a YouTube video, they give you all these little thumbnails of random videos on YouTube. So your website then gets cluttered with other people's junk. Very true. So it maintains your brand on your website. I think that's a great point. And um, what do you think about Facebook and Facebook Premier? Okay, so Facebook, everyone knows about Facebook video. Yeah. You, you upload a video. But what's rarely used is Facebook Premier. So Facebook Premier is essentially going live, but without the stress of going live. You can produce mm. a video and then set a time and a day that it'll be released. Okay. And then there's even like a whole marketing scheme you can have. Hey, we're going to be live at this time with this video right. and this and that. And then you have a perfect seamless video going out to your audience almost like a webinar type of experience yes it's kind of like back in the day when we used to actually have to tune in and watch tv at a certain time yeah because we didn't we weren't able to record everything because the vcr light was still flashing because our parents couldn't figure out how to set it there right. you go and that ties into the whole aspect where you're basically telling your audience tune in at this time mm -hmm. for this specific event be there yeah. be square and you could also say something like a limited time or we're going to take it down after a week or after several days now how do you integrate these things with a newsletter so a newsletter so every so video is great with newsletters but the problem is you can't embed video into a newsletter yeah that's everyone's little stumble well, you can put a thumbnail of it up. Or here's another little trick. Create a small GIF of just a small portion of it. An image. And then put that yeah. in there. So it's just the GIF image has that little motion. It looks like a video, but it's not a video. So you're kind of tricking the system. They click it and it sends them back, which I always say, try to send everyone back to your home, back to your website. Absolutely. Always bring people, people home. Bring them back to your website. And that's where they can watch the full video. Absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. Now, when you're doing videos like the one we're doing now, how can you better use the type of lobby experience or in some uh, platforms? I don't remember what Zoom calls it, where it's a lobby or a waiting room or something of that nature. How can you better use those in video production? I don't know. I, I don't think you can put them in, in a Zoom lobby. I don't think that's a thing. But what you can do, if you are a dentist or a, a massage therapist or whatever, and you have an actual physical lobby in your f building, in your facility, you can have a TV and you can have your own content on that TV in your lobby. Now, you don't need to show the view in the morning and you don't need to do all that. You can actually sell content and commercials with some of your business partners. Uh, if you own a hair salon. Very true. Very true. People that, 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 you know, provide you a shampoo and all that kind of stuff and say, hey, would you like to buy a commercial spot in our lobby? And then you can put out your own content in the lobby as well, talking about different type of haircuts and this and that, whatever you can create some fun little programs. And so it kind of gives them a personalized experience when they're at your facility. I think that's a very, very good point because I've been to doctors locally and I would say without exception, every single doctor that I've been to has some type of widescreen TV in the lobby, whether you want to see it or not. And most of them are just cycling through commercials for their own practice or they show testimonials there was only one doctor i went to who was a very high-end surgeon who actually showed relaxing mountain scapes and butterflies oh, nice. to try to try to make you calm down before surgery everybody else just had commercials for their own practice which i totally understand so i think that's where what you just described would be extremely relevant for them even in the relaxing landscapes every couple of minutes you could show a brief clip 
uh, where the doctor says, hi, here are some testimonials, or you could even show them silently or the relaxing music in the background is a subtle, almost subconscious reminder. Um, and I think that's what I meant because as far as doing videos in the waiting room section for like Zoom or what have you, maybe you could insert videos somehow. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure if you can or can't. What would you say would be five questions to to begin thinking about what your videos should be about from the perspectives of business owners and then the digital marketing consultant from those two perspectives? Yeah, so it's very common that people come and they, to us, and I have a Zoom call now because it's so popular with yeah. these times, and they say, I just don't know what to talk about. I'm like, you do know what to talk about. You just are overthinking it because it's very simple if you really think about what you should be talking about in your videos. I mean, the first one is what does your product service do for others? What does it solve? What is the, the why would someone want to use your service and need to use your service? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Absolutely. And I think when people make videos, I don't know technically if there is an easier way to do this. I think a lot of it depends on the platform. But I know for myself, I work from lists and I work from outlines. I'm so used to working uh, in a very, very organized, deliberate type of structure that I learned from working with all these different marketing agencies where you, you, you know, you're so... Um, you had the team lead, and then you had someone going in where the team lead would go and check in with the director of marketing. So you worked as part of a team. So if you don't have structure, you're lost. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, I think, and some people can do things on the fly. Some people are, are not so good at it. So I always work from lists, and I'm a big fan of those. So I always write down questions before I talk to somebody. And there goes my microphone into my lap. So if I don't have questions written out, then I can feel like I'm meandering. Even if you have a great guest like 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 you here, you can easily kind of forget and flum flum. So I think it really helps to have your points written out. Yeah. I have seen people actually write out outlines and do videos and you can't see it, but they would tape it onto the monitor. Mm -hmm. I've seen people tape it onto the monitor or you could get a stand where you have your outline right here yeah. out of view and just read that. Um, so, another great uh, way is just think about what are the search, what are people Googling when they look for your looking for your product or service? Yeah. I mean, if you get into your SEO and your keywords and your Google analytics, these are the things that you should be talking about. And these are the answers you should be providing for your, your, your clients. What do you think are the pain points, the main pain points for your type of ideal customer or client? Well, I guess it would all depend upon what industry you're in. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, they obviously, they always need more leads. They need more leads. Yeah, yeah people always need more leads. That is correct, yes. So do you, is, what do you think that your clients should know about your industry and services and products? before they call you instead of saying you know hey how much is a video yes yes uh, for from my perspective i get that call daily how much is seo mm -hmm. well how much is a car i don't know what you want done how much work you're going to need how much hand holding you may need or may not need so mm -hmm. what should they know before calling you whether it's a business owner or a digital marketing person like myself what should we both know before calling someone like you instead of just calling you and say what's the price yeah yeah i mean that, that that's exactly what people should be asking when they create these videos too but if you're directly at me what should people know i think that the first thing you need to do when before you call somebody like me is have all your social media accounts set up be somewhat active on them to a point already we can't start from square zero where you have four followers on Facebook and we, we spend money on creating a video, your return on investment is not going to yeah. be very, you need to first have a following. So you're, you're, you, you have to, you have to have the chicken before you start selling the eggs. Yeah, I agree. So in that context, your ideal customer would be like you said, marketers who are working with businesses, but from yeah. the business standpoint, 
it would probably be a digital marketer and tell me if I'm wrong, who works with what I call enterprise businesses where they have 50 or more employees. Be oh, yeah, th those are great. Because you could work with an attorney who has a small staff maybe or an accountant or even a doctor or a dentist or what have you. But if you have, it has to be someone who's got some kind of infrastructure. Is that yeah. close to I mean, accurate? I work very closely with a financial advisory group and we do everything from webinars to, I help them coordinate for guest appearances on podcasts, on TV shows and stuff of that nature as well. We do a full, full structure to help them out. And they do YouTube channel videos. They do social media videos. They do probably three to four videos a week with, and they have a staff of about eight people. So they just constantly churn out and their content's out there for people to watch, to, to tune in and do for a webinar. Like every Thursday we have a webinar that goes live from our studio. And just consistency is sometimes the key to success. Repetition, consistency, yes. running it like a machine. Mm -hmm. and, and I think an example of that is I, I keep going back to the surgeon I went to, and he was the only surgeon in Sarasota who had more than 10 reviews on Google reviews or on Yelp, which is hard to believe. But I found him because he had so many reviews. He was on YouTube. He had multiple videos showing the work that he did, um, interviewing patients afterwards, interviewing other um, people in the industry. Um, he was all over Facebook talking about the latest news, the latest uh, surveys, the latest research. So it instilled in me a level of confidence Correct. that if this person is going to literally cut you open, he seems like he knows what he's doing. He's got, you know, I forget how many reviews he had, but it was like at least a hundred, uh, you know, at least a hundred reviews. So you, it increases this perception of professionalism and commitment to that industry. Yes. Whereas and how those, you should, how should you should do your social media? The same you, know, intent. you need to flood them with information reviews and stuff that makes builds confidence that you are an expert. Yeah. And I would add from an SEO perspective, which is search engine optimization and using Google from an SEO perspective, when you're flooding social media channels with video content to coordinate that or kind of try to connect it to blog posts, to podcast, to connect it to other things as well and use different hashtags. And, you know, you can resend that video next week or next month. You don't have to just submit it one time. Uh, that may be different with YouTube because I don't think they want to see the same video more than once. No, but that's, that's fine, yeah. But when you share it on social media outlets such as Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, you can reshare it, I would say once a month oh. and may, maybe twice a month at the most and use different hashtags, different titles, different search terms, submit yeah, yeah. it to different groups and so on. Because again, like you said, for some people, that's going to be the first time they ever saw it. Mm -hmm. And then that goes back to like when I was talking about the five unique locations to post your video. So you yeah. have the one video and like we didn't get to, I suggest Pinterest. Pinterest is great idea. Used. Thank you. Uh, you create a Pinterest board and especially let's say you're selling women's cosmetics. You need to be on Pinterest. Oh, and definitely. Because it's entirely visual. Correct. And it's, it's just like Instagram, but there's a whole niche of the, the, the market out there that loves Pinterest. I know my wife loves Pinterest. I never go on Pinterest, but my wife does. So if you're trying to sell something to, to a woman in this country, I feel as though Pinterest might be even better than YouTube. Yeah, or, or something that is anything that's really a very visual product. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. And it didn't even occur to me that you could use videos on Pinterest. Um, I, and what's funny is because rarely do people put videos on Pinterest, yeah. it actually bumps it up in the search. You get this little bump because it hasn't been over overused yet. I have to post this on Pinterest now. And um, 
I'll use your headshot because you have more hair than me. Um, but yeah, I have a hundred or more infographic images on Pinterest and it's very, very true. If it's, and I think that goes back to repurposing content, yeah. what it, 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 using it in different ways in, in return and investment is the repurpose. Yeah. You could take this podcast and you can put it on Temi.com and get the transcript for, yeah. and then instantly you have a, an interview blog. There's so many ways you can reuse video. Even if you Good idea. use this initially as a podcast, we have a video and then we have a podcast. There's two reasons just for this one interview, just in this one little segment. You have two different segments of the population. The guy that's working out can listen to us and the person that's sitting in an office and just has a YouTube channel playing while they're doing their work. Boom. You got two different. Video is an amazing return on investment. If you do it right, you can be on every single platform. You can reach so many people. Yeah. It's just the way I, you, I, should, you should go. I, I agree totally. And I would say to anyone who has any reticence toward using it, just organize your branding and your marketing message and what you want to talk about and why and who you're speaking to. And don't be afraid because obviously I'm here. I am by no means Brad Pitt. Um, am I. You know, but it's not about that. It's about something that you're passionate about that you really truly enjoy and believe in and want to share it with others and it connects to your business interests as well oh, so absolutely. um and the other key i like to tell people is stop selling and start helping yeah you need to help people with your content yes it's i not agree always about trying to make that sale trying to make the sale it's it's about educating your clients about your industry about your product and how it can better their lives. Yeah. And, and the thing is, we're in a now, we're in a, a, a post COVID-19 world. We're all hoping that this thing will, you know, fade away or go away somehow, or there'll be a vaccine soon. But the reality is that more people are working from home now than ever before. And even those who are not need to be marketing using the internet, using digital marketing, whereas before it was perhaps optional now it's it's even more relevant than ever before so chris i really appreciate you being on the, yeah, the show so for having me on. do you have any parting thoughts or maybe anything that you know you feel like i should have asked you about or anything you'd like no, to add no no I, I mean just hey when you're making content like i said make sure that you're informing your 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 clients about what your product can do for them i think yeah. i always tell people don't be muhammad ali when you make videos, you can't pump yourself up as if you're the greatest thing ever. Because if all you're doing is talking about yourself, people will turn you off. You need to talk about what your product or service can do for them. Very true. The Very true. I, I could not agree with you more. It, it really is about that. What does this have to do with me? That's what every consumer is asking. Correct. Nobody cares about your company. No one cares about your awards. Nobody cares how long you've been in business. They only care about what you can do for, for them. As the right. They right. have a problem and their problem is always going to be attracting more leads, whether they're clients, whether they're customers, whether they're people going to a restaurant or going to a mm -hmm. surgeon or a dentist or, or whatever. They always have the same problem, but the specifics of that problem or what's in or, or what what that has to do with their business is what makes it different. So you want to speak to those needs. So Chris, I, I thank you so much for being on oh, my, thank you so much for having me my on. podcast, my video. I really, truly, sincerely appreciate it. And um Please hang around. We'll chat some more. And for those listening or watching on YouTube, thank you so much for your time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and uh, stay tuned. Thank you very much and have a great day, everybody.